now we look at uh, how to store uh, clauses literals variables in in uh, in an optimal way in the context of sat solve so let's look at how variables are stored uh, variables are stored as a a word in the machine word of the machine and let's suppose it's a 32 bit word then to the power 31 variables will be there in our machine positive numbers are treated as as a as positive literals and negative numbers are treated as negative literals of the same variable and the, this this gives us a very compact way of representing uh, variables and we don't need to separately keep a list of what are the names of these variables all we know is that uh, each number is a variable so we don't need a separate explicit data structure just to keep the record of the relevant variables uh, so for example in, in some formula you have a variable so uh, one two three four five and uh, they also have positive literals and negative numbers are negative literals now once you have variables you need to think about maintaining the assignment of each of these variables for each variable you have three possibilities it's true false or unassigned and uh, we so for that you need two bits so you maintain a bit vector which every two bits represents a, a assignment of some variable that is not enough you also need to push and pop assignments in your assignment stack you may remember from uh, cdcl uh, you you build uh, assignment one uh, one after another and once uh, and time to time you backtrain and remove the assignment so it's a good idea to have a stack which is maintain a list of literals not list of variables a list of literals that are true under the current assignment for example you may have this kind of stack uh, which can be just simply a list and we say this is my assignment minus four minus two minus three and minus fifty and let's suppose the right side is the is the, is the latest element so you can push it from, from the right side once you have uh, stored your assigned variables and assignment now let's see how we store clauses well you can store the clause as an array of arrays and uh, when you do that then every row of this array has a fixed length but however the clauses have a various to various different lengths we will see how we handle that and uh, you for each uh, clause you need to keep some header information like uh, is it true in the current assignment is it false is it unassigned or some other additional data structure we will see we need then what you do you store some literals which can fit in that that length you have assigned fixed length assigned for each clause and if you have more literals then you point it to the list of literals we have seen that we need to have a watch literals uh, to be watch two literals on each clause we keep these two watched literals the front of the this uh, list of literals in our our clauses so if watch literals are changed we just swap them around such that the watch literal always in front this is not a universal design some solvers uh, keep them uh, uh, where they are and just keep the record where they actually they are okay in the header or just uh, the keeping the pointers uh, ready for them in some implementations they are also cache aware for example the the each row on in the uh, which represents a clause uh, is cache aligned so let's suppose you have a cache which which let's say 32 per word long or or uh, 128 word long whatever the cache line looks like you ensure that uh, uh, your memory allocation is in such a way that the clause is always aligned with the cache okay stack solvers often pre-allocate a huge amount of uh, uh, memory to store clauses and other data structures and then internally uh, manage the the memory and they don't go back to the OS and allocate memory again and again that ensures that uh, they have a nice big chunk of continuous memory so once you have uh, allo stored the clauses and variables now you need to access them uh, and somehow these literals and uh, clauses have to talk to each other so remember that one of the most important operation is unit propagation in unit propagation what happens is uh, some literal becomes true we need to uh, disable the clause uh, that where l is there and uh, then check for unit propagation in clauses containing 
not of L. When L negation of L, wherever it occurs, maybe those clauses now have become uh, uh, unit clauses and maybe we want to propagate further. Sometimes we we need to undo this these changes. Sometimes like we disable a clause, then we have to re-enable when we have to uh, when we things undone, when things are being undone. Therefore, uh, we need to maintain an occurrence map. For each literal, we need to know the list of clauses where it occurs. So one important observation of uh, almost all solvers do is that they maintain different uh, data structures for different length of clauses. So one data structure, they always occurrence map they maintain for the binary clauses, one for ternary clauses, and then the third category is a large class. So let's look at how would you implement such a map when you have a, you want to implement from literals to large clauses. So SAT solvers are memory intensive programs. When we run a SAT solver runs, we want to reduce the number of dereferencings, resizing, and uh, cache meshes. All these potential loss of performance should be reduced. So what do we do? Uh, this is uh, one design in which you maintain a a list of uh, literals with some record with them and uh, let's suppose literal n1 and l2 has three pointer associated with each one of them start top and end these are the pointers to the point of the stack so let's say how the stack looks like uh, let's consider the letter l2 it has a it's a start point of the stack is here and the top of uh, of the stack is here and the uh, end is here and basically my, my say capacity of this particular stack and between uh, start and top all these pointers are pointing at the wherever this literal occurs actually not only occurs and also watched in the same area this l1 will have a start and stop somewhere else in the same area what happens is sometimes for a literal you have a too many clauses when it is watched so then you start expanding and then you hit at the end pointer end pointer and you run out of the space in the neighborhood so in that point you need to take this whole stack and shift it somewhere else and uh, that time you do the resizing so these these data structures are not universal for example you have a, a multi-threaded program then you may have a situation that different threads are watching different literals you need to have a two different such uh, stacks for each thread the various solvers optimize their uh, their data structure based on their access patterns and their implementation and the algorithm they are using so there is no universal consensus where uh, you can say that this is the right design but more or less most solvers conform to this data structure